Now I'm going to cause you pain. Not because I want to derive pleasure from fulfilling your genuine desire of relinquishing control just because I was abused as a kid and this is all a way of taking revenge against the women who hurt me. This is BDSM. You're kind of scaring me and giving me zero reasons to trust you, but you're also super hot, so I'll go along with it while we work on your obsession with BDSM. Uh, turn it off! Turn it off! Hi, I'm Vicky. And to us, movies like Fifty Shades of Grey are almost horror flicks because of how much they misconstrue and demonize our lifestyle. Hi, my name is Steve, and the two of us are in a 24-7, master-slave BDSM relationship, technically similar to the one you, or more likely your mom, saw in Fifty Shades of Grey, but nowhere near as, well, abusive. Take a moment to imagine your favorite high school teacher being spanked with a paddle while wearing a ball gag. Actually, with how little money teachers make nowadays, chances are yours might actually have an OnlyFans. So you may not need to imagine it. Good lord, Mrs. Sullivan. I give that ass a D for damn. It might seem weird to you in the beginning, but you can probably understand it if it's an occasional once in a while thing. After all, everyone likes pain sometimes. Hell, spicy food is painful. So is a really hot bath. But once it becomes a non-stop thing, most vanilla people start wondering why do we feel the need to introduce an entire aisle of Home Depot into the bedroom? A full-time BDSM lifestyle is fundamentally not about the toys and the pain, but about the emotional bond. It's a form of consensual non-consent where someone, namely me, will consent to allowing someone else to do almost anything they want to them. On the surface, it can sound pretty terrifying, but consensual non-consent is not something people take lightly. Everybody involved needs to have absolute trust in each other so that nobody ends up with any permanent damage. You wouldn't do it with just anybody. That's a word you'll hear over and over again in long-term BDSM relationships, trust. BDSM and love are one and the same because both are built on a foundation of trust. Yeah, having a relinquishing total power over someone can be kind of scary, but that's part of the relationship adventure for us. Like going to Ikea together. Only in BDSM, all your pent up emotions may eventually lead to some pretty awesome sex. Now there's a new marketing slogan for you. Ikea, like BDSM without the awesome sex. One of the things that Fifty Shades got half right is the existence of contracts between dominant and submissive partners. The only problem is that in the movie, it's presented as an ultimatum for Anna. She either signs it or loses Christian. It feels too much like manipulation. Also, it looks like Christian put the contract together with an actual lawyer. And you know, that must have ruined that guy's day. I went to Harvard for this. Other than that, yeah, BDSM contracts work like you saw in the film. They can cover a wide range of things protocol, how to dress, how to talk and behave, what's expected from a sub in a household, both domestic and sexually. It's actually nothing too extreme. Of course, it's all symbolic and not legally binding and probably sounds silly to those in non-BDSM relationships, but all symbols are nonsense to those who don't understand the meaning behind them. It's like the only reason we don't consider expensive diamond engagement rings weird is because marketers for a giant diamond company spent millions convincing us otherwise. Huh, maybe that's why some BDSM lifers use collars instead of rings. People in BDSM and regular think buying a dildo is the kinkiest thing ever relationships aren't all that different. We fight, we cry, we laugh, and when we find that special someone, we want to put a ring on it. Only with the BDSM crowd, it can often mean their partner's neck. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Essentially, a collar can be the BDSM equivalent of a wedding ring. There's a lot of ritual associated with them. That's right. Oh my God, are you Spider Woman? Man, I wish. No, I'm Julie Fennell, an associate professor of sociology at Gallaudet University with specializations in gender and sexuality. I've published several academic articles on the American pansexual BDSM subculture, as well as the 2022 book, Please Scream Quietly. Mind if I hang around and talk more about collars? Please. These collars are basically sacred objects to people in BDSM relationships. Outsiders are not supposed to touch them without permission. The submissive's body is sort of owned by the dominant partner, and the submissive is seen as giving them that control by putting on the collar. I was at a collaring ceremony that took place at a consecrated dungeon at a pagan BDSM event once. It's very much like a regular wedding. And as you can see, we aren't talking about pink leather numbers with spikes and slut written on them. Though we do also own one of those, and I look amazing in it. But for ceremonies, the main type of collar we use is a very polished, thick band of metal. 
They lock via a special key and cannot be removed without it. Lifestylers that take their collars very seriously can refuse to remove them even for airport security. I mean, I don't do that because I don't have a fetish for getting groped by annoyed civil servants, but some folks might. There are people in long-term BDSM relationships all around you, whether you know it or not. In between tying each other to racks and chaining one another up until we accidentally cosplay Marley from A Christmas Carol, we do regular stuff, like shop and keep house. To be clear, while long-term BDSM couples often have day collars suitable for wearing in public, they usually tend to also have kinky ones for use in private. All that being said, it's super important to recognize that the vast majority of those kind of BDSM relationships are almost comically vanilla, in the sense that most of the ones that last long term are more based around service than they are around masochism. In other words, a sub in a long term BDSM relationship spends a lot less time in a gimp suit than they spend making their dom or master breakfast or cleaning the house for them. Elaborate dungeon play sessions are too exhausting to be the core of a long term relationship. Not that people haven't tried doing long-term BDSM relationships that are all whips and no conversation. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the idea of engaging in BDSM without love makes no sense to me. And love grows out of doing boring, everyday things together. I do know a lot of couples that try to just stick to BDSM without emotions or entanglements. To that I say... <laughs> Good luck with that.